In the 1900s, professional black baseball began to spring up throughout America, especially in the South. This brought baseball into the community of African Americans. Over 12 years ago, Coach Kadar decided to put his guys in the Negro League throwback jerseys to help his team understand where it all started for African Americans in baseball. It's, it's really a special thing, and I try to tell my players that they're fortunate because because of the, the endurance, the things that the uh, the players who played in the Negro League went through, they bridged the gap. The event was set to be played against Gramlin State when they visited Lee Hines Field. Gramlin's coach, James Cooper, says this matchup is always exciting between the two schools. It's extremely important to play this series in these Negro League uniforms. It gives uh, two HBCUs and Southern and Gramlin State University opportunity to pay homage to some of our forefathers that came before us in the baseball round. Guys like Cool Papa Bell, uh, Josh Gibson, and, and Satchel Page. It really helps you to realize how far the game has moved from you know, the past times and the privileges I have to play now. Much like the traditional competition between these two schools, the Negro League held an East-West All-Star Game every year. Former head baseball coach prior to Coach Kadar, Leroy Boyd, who coached from 1977 to 1984, was in attendance at the game and talked about the East-West All-Star Game. It was from all over the Negro Leagues that were chosen who were the greatest players in the Negro Leagues at the time. It was played at Comiskey Park in Chicago where the White Sox played. And it drew 50 to 60,000 people every game. This weekend happened to be Alumni Day as players from both schools reunited at Saturday's doubleheader. A former player of the Negro League was part of that group in the stands, MC Johnson, who played for the Kansas City Monarchs. Playing in the Negro League uh, was a great thing for me because I thought that it was uh, a road to the next level. But I enjoyed those days, and uh, it's a lifelong lesson that I won't forget. Here's a little Negro League trivia to leave you with, honoring the past to understand where we are today. The first African American to play in the minor leagues was John W. Bud Fowler. There were over 200 all-black professional baseball teams in 1880. Andrew Rue Foster developed the Negro League after World War I. A team that was established in the National Negro League was the Chicago American Giants. In the Negro Leagues was the Cuban Stars. It was the Dayton Marcos. Established in the 1920s with the Negro National League was the Detroit Stars. It was the Indianapolis ABCs. A team established in 1920 the National Negro League is the Kansas City Monarchs. Other teams included Chicago Giants and St. Louis Giants. The Negro League officially closed their doors after 1962.